Hello, my awesome PMP exam warriors. How are you? It's your buddy Phil here, project management trainer and coach. I hope you're doing awesome. Today, I've got a very quick pop quiz for you, and I'm going to take you through some true or falses, some two options, choose one. Let's get straight into it. You are a project manager working on the authorization document for the project. What do you get out? A. Business case. B. Project charter. Which one is it? The answer is project charter. The project charter is the authorization document that we understand from the world of predictive or the world of agile. Next question. You are in the initiating stage of your project. You are working with your team on a document. What do you get as an output? A. Project management plan. B. Stakeholder register. The answer is stakeholder register. This is what you get as an output of the initiating process group. It is a stakeholder register. Next question. You are a project manager in the scope area of planning. What do you get as an output? A. Project schedule. B. Work breakdown structure. The answer is a work breakdown structure. Next question. You are working on an agile project and you are in the very first event. What is the first event in the world of Scrum? So this is one you need to know cold, no options. All right. The best answer, my friends, is the sprint. That's right. Not sprint planning. It's the sprint. Did you know that the sprint is a container for all the other events? And therefore, it is technically the first event. Within the sprint, we have sprint planning, the daily scrum, sprint review, and the sprint retrospective. Next question. You are working with your team on sizing stories. Which assumption should you make when doing this? A, a capacity of eight hours daily. B, a capacity of six hours daily. C, a capacity of 12 hours daily. The answer is B, a capacity of six hours daily. That should be your starting point. Never estimate based on a capacity of eight hours because there will always be time spent during the day for non-work items. Next question. You are a project manager working on an agile project. You're using Kanban as an approach. Which of the following is correct? A. Maximize your whip. B. Limit your whip. The answer is B. Limit your whip. That just means limit your work in progress. As an Agilist, as someone who uses Kanban, you should know that the work in progress needs to be limited in order to get the most throughput. We always say in the world of Agile, Stop starting, start finishing when we use Kanban. And that means we need to limit what we're doing so that we can actually get more done. Limit your whip so that you can get more done. Next question. You are working on a Scrum project. Your product owner has decided to add backlog items in the middle of the sprint. True or false? This is acceptable under all circumstances. The answer is false. In the world of Scrum, we tend to avoid encouraging the addition of scope during the sprint. It could be an exception, but it's definitely not the rule. Next question. 
you are on a scrum project and you're working on an artifact. Which of the following does this describe? A. Project management plan. B. Potentially shippable increment. C. Scope baseline. The answer is B. It's the potentially shippable increment PSI. Remember in the world of Scrum, you have three artifacts. You have the product backlog, the sprint backlog, and the increment, also called potentially shippable increment. Next question. True or false? In the world of Scrum, everyone in the company is welcome to the retrospective. The answer is false. In the world of Scrum, we do not encourage just anyone in the company to attend the retrospective. The retrospective is reserved for the Scrum team, although the Scrum team could invite specific individuals on agreement to the retrospective for different reasons. Next question. You're working on an Agile project. Which of the following should come first? A. Team Charter B. Project Charter C. Team Agreement The best answer is B. It's the Project Charter. The Project Charter is established first to give a vision of what needs to be done on the project. And after that, team charter, which is also known as a team agreement, also known as a social contract, also known as a team contract, could be developed. Next question. You're working on a project of a predictive nature. You are at a point where a phase needs to be transitioned. Which of the following would you expect as a tool and technique to be used? A cause and effect analysis B regression analysis C decomposition the best answer is B regression analysis regression analysis is used as a technique during the closing of a project or phase it helps us look in the rear view mirror to understand why we got the results we got. Next question. You are a project manager working on a predictive project. You have just finished working on a process known as develop project charter. Which of the following would you expect as an output? A. Stakeholder register. B. Assumption log. C. Regression register. The answer is B. It's assumption log. The assumption log is one of the outputs that you derive when you're done with develop project charter. Next question. You are working on a predictive project and the project demands the creation of a plan to guide stakeholder engagement. Which process in the PMBOK does this best describe? Is it A, plan stakeholder engagement? Is it B, identify stakeholders? Is it C, manage stakeholder engagement? The best answer, my friends, is plan stakeholder engagement. This is where you are planning how to engage the stakeholder. It is not identify stakeholders. This is where we just identify the stakeholders and we do not plan how to engage them at this point. Next question. You are a project manager on a project and you encounter a risk. You decide to cut off some of the scope in order to deal with the risk. What strategy does this best describe? 
No options given. You should know this one. The best answer is avoid. This is risk avoidance. Cut enough some of the scope. Next question. You're working on a predictive project and you encounter a risk. You decide to buy insurance to deal with the risk. What does this best describe? All right, the best answer is transfer. This describes risk transfer. You are transferring the risk to a third party through the purchase of insurance. Next question. You are a project manager on a large scale engineering project. You encounter a risk and you decide to set up a special purpose company in order to deal with this upside risk. What strategy does this best describe? The best answer is share. When you set up a special purpose company to deal with an upside risk, which is an opportunity, that is the share strategy. Next question. You're a project manager on a large scale IT project. You encounter a risk. You decide to increase the probability of the risk occurring to 100%. What strategy does this best describe? The answer, my friends, is exploit. When you increase a risk's probability to 100%, that means you have exploited the opportunity. Remember, we have negative risks or threats, positive risks or opportunities. Next question. Your IT department has assigned you to be a project manager on a large scale implementation. You encounter a risk. However, on analysis, you discover that this risk will impact the entire organization. What is the best approach to this risk? There's one answer. Tell me what the answer is. The best answer, my friends, is escalate. Escalating risks is a common strategy where the risk impacts not just the project, but beyond the project, for example, a program or a portfolio, or in this case, the entire organization. Escalating a risk could also be necessary when the risk may affect the project, but the power authority to implement the strategy is beyond the project manager's authority. Next question. You are a project manager on a large-scale pharmaceutical project. You encounter a risk with the drug manufacturing process. You have decided that this risk will go to the bottom of the risk register without any further action. What strategy does this describe? The answer to this, my friends, when you send a risk to the bottom of the risk register without any further action, that's acceptance. You accepted the risk. Next question. You're a project manager on a project and you encounter an opportunity. You decide that instead of pursuing the opportunity by putting your best people on the project, you would rather wait to see how things unfold. What strategy have you adopted for this upside project risk? The best answer, my friends, for that one is accept. You accepted the risk because you waited to see how things would pan out without doing anything extra. That is, accept for an opportunity this time. Next question. 
On your large-scale engineering project, you have decided to multiply the probability rating of a risk by the impact rating of the risk. What number do you derive? How would you define it? The best answer to this, my friends, is risk score. The risk score is probability rating times impact rating. Next question. On your large-scale marketing project, you decide to multiply the probability in percent by the impact of a risk in terms of its dollar amount. What number does this best describe? The best answer, my friend, is expected monetary value, EMV. Next question. In which risk process is the expected monetary value calculated? Is it A, perform qualitative risk analysis, or is it B, perform quantitative risk analysis? The answer, my friends, is EMV is calculated as part of perform quantitative risk analysis. Next question. You have calculated the risk score. In which process is the risk score calculated? In which process is the risk score calculated? The best answer, my friends, is perform qualitative risk analysis. That is where the risk score is computed. Next question. You have found the earned value on your project for the current month. Which metric would you need to compute the schedule performance index? The best answer, my friends, and it's one answer that I'm expecting to hear, is planned value, PV. If you have earned value, you need PV in order to calculate the SPI. Next question. Your earned value has been found to be lower than the actual cost. What does this mean? A. You are under budget. B. You are over budget. C. You are right on target. The answer, my friends, is if your earned value is lower than your actual cost, you are over budget. Next question. Your plan value is higher than your earned value. What does this mean? Your plan value is higher than your earned value. What does this mean? The answer? You are behind schedule. If your plan value is higher than earned value, that means you have more things planned than what you accomplished. Next question. Your schedule variance is minus $10. What does this mean? If your schedule variance is minus $10, what this means is you are behind schedule. Next question. 
Your cost variance is $500. What does this mean? If your cost variance is $500, this means you are under budget. I didn't say minus $500. I said $500. $500 is positive, and that means you are in good light. You are under budget. And that is the way you need to process the information when it comes to variances. All right, here's your next question. You are calculating the TCPI, the Two Complete Performance Index, on your project. What does this tell you? A. The schedule variance. B. The likelihood of completing the project on budget. The answer is B. The likelihood of you completing the project on budget. Next question. You're working on a Scrum project. What are the three roles in Scrum? The answer. Scrum master. Product owner. And developers. Here's your final question, and it's a bit of a long one. In the PMBOK Guide 6th edition, mention is made of 10 areas of knowledge and 5 groups of processes. What are they? All right. The best way for you to answer that question, my friends, is with a mnemonic. Mnemonic. And the mnemonic that I use is, I saw six chipmunks quietly roasting coffee, reading poetry stories. Or I saw six Cubans quietly rolling cigars, really puffing smoke. You pick which one you want, but I'm looking for The knowledge areas of integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources, communications, risk, procurement, and stakeholder. I'll say that again. I'm looking for integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources, communications, risk, procurement, and stakeholder. The five process groups I'm looking for are I prefer extra money cash. Or you could say I prefer eating mangoes chilled. And that just stands for initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this very simple trivia to keep you on your toes. For a lot of you who are just starting the process, I hope you found value from this. If you did, take some time out, hit that like button, hit that five-star button. Whichever platform you're on, it goes a long way in helping the algorithm, and it helps me stay motivated in creating great content for you. So I appreciate you sharing this podcast with three more people. Let's kill this exam. Let's get it down. I want you to go beyond what happened to me. I got certified my salary level. It went up 300%. I left the organization I was in, and I got employed in organizations I'd been chasing for years as a project manager, project control person, program manager. I'm telling you, when you ace your exam, and you put in the time and the effort to really understand how to apply what you know pragmatically. The sky's the limit from there, my friends. All right? Thank you all very much. All the very best, and talk to you soon. Don't forget to hit that like for me. Bye for now.